Welcome back to PowerPlay. Well, yesterday's news of the Toronto lab has its license suspended for botching drug testing. As must be a particular distress to my next guest, Terence Young lost his 15-year-old daughter Vanessa after she had a horrible reaction to a, a prescribed drug, a common drug, and uh, he's been on a crusade ever since to make sure drug safety becomes a more paramount concern here in Canada. He's done testimony at Senate committees and the like, even written a book about it. Terence Young, appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for inviting me. I'm curious, uh, I mean, a lot of people, my mother included, said, you've got to talk to Terence Young because your, your crusade uh, is of particular interest to a lot of people that worry. They never think prescription drugs could be killers, and yet so many people have, have been killed by prescribed use of them. What's your reaction? What do you think? Are drug, is drug safety in Canada sufficient, in your view, or how much has to be done to improve it? Uh, a lot has to be done. And uh, I've worked on this, Don, for 12 years. And I have to tell you, uh, it's so hard to get people to believe that their doctor might give them something that could hurt them. Uh, I've just found that people believe, uh, choose what they believe, and it's just too much for them to believe. But it's interesting you mentioned that other story today, because the work I do is not about people who take the wrong drug or people who take a drug too much, not following the prescription. The work I do is to address the fourth leading cause of death in Canada, which is prescription drugs taken the right way as prescribed. And how can that be? I mean, I'm just gobsmacked by that because if you're prescribed a drug, presume it's safe to take, is it because it's reacting to other drugs that they don't know what's happening? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's reacting with other drugs. Sometimes it's the drug on its own. In fact, when the pharmaceutical companies uh, present a drug on the market, it's still in the testing. It's in phase four of testing, which the doctors never tell patients. In fact, they give out three to four billion dollars a year of free samples, which I believe is, a, is a, a bad practice. And so you're taking a drug that's in phase four of testing, and you're becoming like a guinea pig or a canary in a mine for the pharmaceutical companies. And uh, one out of five drugs that is put on the market in the United States and Canada either has to be taken off the market for injuring or killing patients or have a new safety warning added. I don't want to get alarmist, but you hear about this lab that's supposed to do the testing and they falsify the records. I mean, even if it's accurately tested, it's dangerous to yeah. some people. And this is a case where a drug might have been wrongly yeah. deemed safe. Well, what I found is, and I, I researched this for five years for my book, Death by Prescription, is the pharmaceutical companies prefer to think of all their information with regards to clinical testing as classified or business information. And it's not. In fact, when patients drop out of clinical trials, it's usually because they're having a reaction. That's the most important safety they should publish, but they don't. They hide that safety information. They refer to it as outliers. In fact, the prescription drug Vioxx, a Merck drug, which eventually killed 55 to 65,000 people in clinical testing in 2000, they were testing it against another Merck drug, Neurontin, to see if it helped with cancer. And they found three heart attacks that they didn't expect. So they just thought, well, our drug is a good drug, so we'll just consider that to be an outlier. Well, that outlier multiplied times the millions of people taking the drug led to 55 to 65,000 deaths. Now, Terrence, you're a conservative MP. You obviously have some clout within the caucus. Have you been able to do anything or get the government to move in the direction you think needs to be done to make drugs safer? Um, I'm getting a lot of positive uh, comments and I'm getting a lot of peace, uh, feedback from my colleagues, from uh, parliamentarians in the other parties, and I'm hopeful change that is coming. But it's certainly a nonpartisan issue, and in fact, it's not just a Canadian issue or, or a North American issue, it's a worldwide issue. And so I just found that it's very hard for people to believe. It's like, you know, it's like being in a workplace when a fire alarm goes. People who've been trained their whole life to walk down the stairs, don't get on the elevator and leave the building, sit. And they wait for the person of authority to say, hey, this may be a real fire this time, we should go out. And the, the only problem is, in this case, the person of authority is the doctors, and they're not getting the information from the pharmaceutical companies to make those decisions wisely. That's pretty scary stuff. All right, Howard, I know you have to run off to a vote. We appreciate you stopping Thanks by. For Thanks having very you. much, yeah. Howard Young. All right, let's change the topics rather dramatically to something completely different. Uh, 